Today I would like to introduce my GERT board version 1 which I soldered yesterday evening. Had a bit of time, the wife was gone out, took the kids with her so I was home alone. So I thought why not, I'll do it, I've got no one um, to disturb me. It was good fun to do. Um, there's a few aspects I'd like to um, mention and show you. So this is like a review as well. Although um, how relevant this review is going to be I'm not sure because the version 1's aren't really sold anymore. Um, the first thing, let's review it. Um, I found a few little issues on there which I wasn't too pleased with. Mainly the header connectors. The single inline header connectors, they were, they came in uh, short little pieces. Uh, you had a whole load of pieces, loads of short ones. Um, they were okay for the buffers, um, they were fine for the relays, uh, relay connectors, um, they were fine for the GP connectors, but, sorry not the GP connectors, the buffers, um, but the GP connector, this one here, it was too short, you had to put a piece on there, so rather than put a piece on there, I grabbed one of my own headers and put that on instead, so it's one long piece, same with your LED buffers just there, that piece there, they were too short, you would have had to use a connector. Um, and put two pieces on. Um, I didn't, I used one of my own and I used the whole long piece. The other thing was the the, the dill <coughs> header, the dual inline header. Uh, it was fine for <coughs> for the um, 80 mega, you break it off, you put it on. Uh, the 6 pin, you break it off, you put it on, no problem. But when you got to your 26 here, it was too short. But you were given another piece, so it was short by 8 pins, uh, a 2x4. Um, so they give you a 2x4 piece, but again, I didn't want to put a short piece and a long piece on there, I wanted to put the whole piece, so I, so I had some, so I put it on there and I kept the 8 pin. 8 pin I, was actually a good idea, I kept, why? Because I've put the 8 pin on there. I have got an IDC connector on there just to stop from shorting, but I put it on there. So it's actually now on the Pi. So that wasn't too bad. It saved me having to buy one of those header connectors. Okay. The other thing I don't know if you've already noticed is the change of the fuse holder. You normally get the white one, which is open, so you have got no capping or protection for the fuse. I got one. I purchased this. It's a capped one. Let's just pull it off. There we go. It pulls off quite nice and easily. And there's the fuse on there, um, and you put it on. This is rated to 5 amps, this um, holder is, and maximum 4 amp on the girt board, so it's perfectly safe to be on there. You've also got a way of seeing the fuse, if it's um, fused or not. It's just on the side rather than on the top, and that's on both sides. So that was something else I changed. Also, I changed the LEDs, um, something that I wanted to do. I didn't really want to use the red ones. And I tell you, they look awesome. I'll switch that on in a minute and show you uh, what colours they are. One thing I did want to change, but unfortunately was unable to, was those three buttons. Um, I wasn't too keen on the white buttons with the rubbery tops. They've got rubbery tops on them. I wasn't too keen on them, so I bought some tactile switch. Uh, tried to put them on, and unfortunately, the holes are too wide. Uh, so the tactile switch would not actually go on. Um, in fact, when I decided to sort of call it a day and say, alright then, I'll just use the ones I've already got, they wouldn't go on either. Those holes are too far apart. So I had to actually bend the pins out to just get those switches in. So that was something, you know, I mean, obviously that's been addressed on the version 2 by using um, pre-assembled SMTs. <coughs> Sorry, but just something to bear in mind when building <coughs> your board. The last change that I made is one of my favourites actually, and that is the version 1 board does not have pull-up resistors on the LEDs. I added those, um, 10k pull-up resistors. Now you're probably thinking, where and how? So that's the best part. So let me turn the board over. 
Okay, and there we have it, right there. Let's see if I can get a good shot of those. I mean, surprising, 8 megapixel camera, and you still don't get a good shot. Just about make it out, hopefully. Um, there we go. I'm sure you get the gist of it. I'm, you know, but, the, but I'll tell you the way I did it. First of all, I laid a track, a nice thin track. It's about one millimeter thin, uh, and that is going to 3.3 volts, just there. That particular track is the copper um, repair tracks that you can buy. You know, I mean, they're normally sold for um, train um, uh, train collectors and um, things like that for when your train tracks, um, the um, the copper tracks break. So you can use this um, sticky back. It's like a sellotape, and you can use these to repair tracks, <coughs> track repair tape. So I did that. Then I did the resistors. Let's see if I can. Um, what I did is I pushed a resistor against one of the pins on the header and soldered it from the other side, and then the solder flowed onto the resistor. And same with this side, just tapped it on this side with a bit of solder, and they joined. And that's how I did that, and that's 10k pull ups on there. So that's quite nice. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, and there we have it there. Just switch it on and you can see the colour of the LEDs. Oh, is the battery. Yeah, switch that on. There we go. Blue LEDs. Look lovely. Um, a little bit brighter than the ones that you normally get. Normally you get the diffused ones. These ones I've got is quite bright. So there you have it. That's a Gerbord. Version 1 with a few little modifications that can easily be done by anybody it does sort of bring the cost up a bit those LEDs um, cost me a few quid and that holder cost me a few quid and I think I've got a pack of hundred on the resistor I mean uh, yeah on the resistors um, and that I think was about 99p or something like that for a pack of hundred still you know I mean considering it's quite expensive um, you can buy sort of hundred for what 20 30p if you do bulk orders but you know, I wasn't doing a bulk order. So uh, it was still worth it, a penny each. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you um, like the modifications I made. And um, just a quick thanks to Gert Van Loo for um, explaining a few bits about the Gert board to me, which enabled me to change the LEDs, put the resistors in, things like that. So there we have it. You know what I mean? And I can understand, um, again, I'm going to mention Alex here, Alex Ains, um, who uh, keeps saying to me that he doesn't want to get rid of his um, dirt board because it has sentimental value and he is absolutely right. You know I mean the when you make the dirt board yourself compared to the version 2, I do have a version 2 right here that's my version 2, it's in the box but the version 1 after you've made it and you spent all that time on it, the pride you get from it it's awesome, It's it's just something else and yeah, I'd never get rid of this one. Never. I'd get I'd get rid of the version two, no problem. But this one I wouldn't. Although I'm keeping the version two because I need it. But if I ever had to or did, the version one always will stay with me. So there we have it. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the video.